But nerds, do you want to know why I'm so successful in everything I do? Why I'm so handsome? Why I make so much money? Let me tell you the tools I use and maybe you can attain 1% of my power. So first of all, let's just talk about what I use as hardware. I use, I use Fedora, the i3 window manager, and two monitors. Any Anything special about that? That's something you to decide. I use two monitors, why? Documentation and code on both screens, very useful. Or YouTube and web browser because I'm, I'm still a Zoomer, so I need constant stimulation. Fedora Linux, it stopped my distro hopping. It cured my distro hopping. This distro cured my distro hopping. Can make another video there, get a million views. It cured my distro hopping, and I, I like to use CentOS or Rocky Linux on my servers, and that is closely related to, Cento uh, to Fedora, sorry. So all the text files, all the file locations are the same. It uses systemd, and that's fine. Why i3? I like, I know how to use it. it, it I, I basically use a fully default setup. Maybe that's a good idea for a video actually, going through my i3 config file. So yeah, this is a quick look at my i3 setup. It is kind of default, right? There's nothing too, too special about it. Um, just some things for executing certain things that I like, but we'll, we'll, I'll go through that in detail later. Uh, keyboard is just a, a cheap Dell one. Nothing special there. I used to use a Model M, but it broke. But I used to use mechanical keyboards and I used to be really into them, but I got like two into them. I started to be like a proper nerd. I was like, oh, I need Cherry MX Reds only. I can't use, well, no, I liked blues or browns. I was like, oh, I need Cherry MX Blues with a, a green on my space bar for the, the weight and the actuation force. And then I was like, bruh, don't need it. Although saying that, if you're actually a super nerd and you play video games, a mechanical keyboard is good because you can press multiple buttons at the same time. So I don't know what I'm saying anymore, but mechanical keyboards are good. I like this one, but in the future it will definitely get changed once it breaks. I mean, it's breaking now. It, it costs eight pounds or something. I also have a ThinkPad laptop, an X220, which I use for literally everything outside my house. It is perfect, amazing. I've had it for about six years. Software, uh, my terminal. This is just the default GNOME terminal. Uh, you might be surprised to know that. I removed all the cruft that comes with it, like the this horrible menu bar. Ugh. And these are, this is my custom profile here. Look at this. Literally no no configuration. I did change the colors, I think, slightly. No, it looks like I didn't. Nothing nothing special here. So I've tried other terminals like Xterm and URXVT. When I start using it, I notice that the text does input quicker. When I'm not using it, I don't notice the input lag on GNOME Terminal. And GNOME Terminal, you know, it's very easy. It just all works. It's there working for me. And I've got all my colour schemes, they all just work with it, whereas like URXVT, you might need to compile them in, or Xterm barely works, and is completely bloated software actually, even though it runs fast, it's, it's really quite bloated. But yeah, I also had a build of ST for a while, but that got too difficult to maintain, I just couldn't be asked, so I was like, ah, GNOME Terminal, it works fine. Everyone knows I use Vim as my text editor, the best text editor on the planet probably. What else have I used? I've used Nano for like a week when I first started Linux. Me and a few friends once sat down for an evening and attempted to learn how to use ED, ED. Uh, that didn't go too well. A terminal multiplexer. I use GNU Screen. I'll do a more in-depth video on this later, but a lot of people would be like, how you need to use TeamMux. Yeah, so on my servers I would use Screen. So let me just do a very quick demo. So if I go Screen. So now I'm in a Screen session, and that means that anything I do in here is within a separate terminal, right? So if I go Control A, which is like, I'm going to execute a screen command, and then press D, I'm now detached from that screen. I can log out my SSH server, I can go back to it, screen-ls like this, and it says, oh look, there's a screen detected. So I go screen-rd, which is like, reconnect, and there I am, back, bam. But you can also do things like open a new terminal. Doesn't look like I have done, but let's say I, I you know, ls, and then I swap back to it and I've got more terminals. So there we go, I can swap between. This is really useful on remote servers, right? You can even do things like split the screen in half like this and then open up two terminals on a remote server. So this is like, as opposed to having two terminals like this, which I do a lot, this is a desktop. On a server, I now have the same thing, but it's screen. Wow, so that's why I use that. Reasons why I don't use Tmux, uh, none particular. Uh, screen is what I was taught first by my mentor and that is now what I use. We've just seen there that I used SSH to connect to remote servers. It's probably my favorite tool in the world. You can use it to remotely connect to servers. You can bounce through servers with it. You can send files with it. SFTP is actually part of SSH. You can tunnel with it. I, I can even tunnel X sessions over it. So I can actually log, like, load up a Firefox window on another server through SSH. So kind of like a, almost a, a remote 
remote, like VNC sort of software, but... I'll do a video on the future of, of advanced SSH concepts. Speaking of SSH, for a VPN, I do use OpenVPN, like more permanent places, but most of the time I'm using S-Shuttle, which I've made a video on here. Watch the video. Not now, though. Continue watching this one, then go watch it. Thank you. So I do a lot of programming. Most of my programming is in Python. Why Python? Uh, I kind of know it quite well. I like it a lot. I think it's a great language. I, I use it mainly for like web development or scripts that do stuff with data, as opposed to like a system administration script, which I would of course write in Bash or post it's compliant shell or what have you. Uh, and then when I want to write a website, I use Django, which is a Python framework for building websites, which I, I do an introduction on here. Uh, but Python has loads of libraries that you can pull things from. So you're basically just gluing together libraries, right? You don't actually have to write any difficult code. And I'm not very smart, so that's very helpful for me. I do some DevOpsy stuff. So my preferred hypervisor, which is all that is, that's a fancy word for saying you can run virtual machines using this software. I like the KVM, the kernel virtual machine. It's obviously built into the Linux kernel. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. I use Vert Manager to view it. Uh, and then if I'm in an enterprise environment, I'll, I'll set up Proxmox, which is like a, a big enterprise-y software for virtual machines, even though you could completely use it on a home lab, but it's got more of a, you know, you can configure storage straight from it, you can migrate virtual machines between two different parts, which is really cool, actually. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Um, Proxmox is also good because it uses LXC containers as well. I use Ansible a lot for config management, for deploying things, uh, Terraform infrastructure as code tool, so you can, with Terraform, you go like, Terraform apply scripts that you've written, and it will go ahead and spin up a thousand servers. And it's very cool. Uh, and that works with lots of different hypervisors. So that can work with KVM, DigitalOcean, OVH, AWS, Azure. What's the other big one? Google Cloud. Those, those sorts of things. It's like a, a cloud agnostic provisioning tool. So you don't need to learn like, I know AWS has like CloudFormation, I think. And you don't have to learn that tool. You just learn Terraform and apply it to everything. Very cool. That's a HashiCorp software. But I also use HashiCorp Packer to create golden images of virtual machines which are basically saying, this is a virtual machine that you can just copy and paste 50 times and you know it's good. Uh, because that, that on that virtual machine, instead of having to like reinstall CentOS from scratch, you just clone it and you've done something fancy in there that you know doesn't clone the IP address or something. You can use tools like uh, VertSys Prep, a KVM tool that, that is used for making golden images without like static IPs or host names are different. It's quite quite nice. Go try out some of those tools. You can be more like me. I'm cool. Subscribe. Please. Every, every time I get a subscription notification, I get a very small dopamine shot in my brain.